Hi guys, and welcome to Hooked for Life with Mary Beth Temple. We're going to make this cute fidget keychain. Now, what makes this a fidget toy? The beads, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of hard to see, they spin. Each of the individual beads spins freely on its little chain stitch. And this is a suitable toy for grown-ups who want something fidgety because it doesn't look like you're carrying a toy, it looks like you're just carrying a keychain. I'm going to use some worsted weight cotton. You don't have to use cotton, you could use another fiber if you wanted, but definitely we want a worsted weight. I'm going to use a size E or three and a half millimeter crochet hook. Now this is smaller than I might normally use for that yarn, but I want it for a specific reason, and that's because a hook that size goes easily through our pony beads. You're going to need seven pony beads to make the size that I made. Now if you want it to be a little longer, you could add beads. If you want it to be a little shorter, you could subtract them. And then the last thing that I used was this um, key ring on a, uh, what do you call these, carabiner, lanyard clip? Anyway, I like these because if you wanted to put it on your keys, great. Otherwise, you could clip this onto a belt loop or onto hardware on your purse or something like that, and it would be near you if you needed. But again, has a more uh, tailored look than perhaps a, a toy might have. So let's jump right in. To begin with, we're going to pre-string our beads. And to do that, let's bring the beads back in. That would be easier. <laughs> to do that, I'm going to put beads right on my crochet hook. I'm going to pull up a loop of my yarn that's attached to my skein, my working yarn. And I'm just going to slide that loop right through the beads. And I'm going to do that again for the one we're going to do on camera. I'm going to have seven beads in my keychain. Now you can also do this with a tapestry needle if you like. Just grab a tapestry needle and thread the tail through. But uh, this way I don't have to go up and find it. I've already got my crochet hook with me. So I'm just going to slide those right on. So there's my seven beads. And I'm going to pull that loop through so they're well down onto the working yarn and they just have that one strand of yarn going through. So I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Half double crochet in the third chain from hook, and I like to work in the back or the bump of the chain. One, two, three. So there's my yarn over. Insert my hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over, draw through three. So there's my first half double crochet. I have two chains left. I'm going to put one half double crochet in each of them. And of course, if you need this pattern all written out, you can zip over to the blog and the link is in the description below. So there's my first row. I have three half double crochets in this chain two. Now for this pattern, chain two does not count as a stitch. We are going to use those chain twos later, but they don't count as a half double crochet. So I'm just going to chain two and turn. One, two, and I'm going to put my first double crochet, uh, pardon me, half double crochet of this row in that very first stitch. I'm not counting that chain two as a stitch. Now we're going to start placing beads. I'm going to chain one and extend the loop just a little bit so I don't lose it. Bring a bead up. So I'm going to bring my hook in from the other side of the bead. Grab that working loop and pull it through. And that is what that looks like. Sometimes you have to tug a little to tighten it up. That one actually came through pretty nicely. So I'm going to skip my second half double crochet, put a half double crochet in the last half double crochet. Again, ignoring that chain two because we don't care about it now. And that is my row two. Now for rows three, four, five, six, seven, I haven't written this down yet. Can you tell? <laughs> Three through eight, rows three through eight, we're gonna add a bead on every row. So I did a chain two turn, half double crochet in the first half double crochet. 
Again, my yarn is a little bit splitty here, but that's not the yarn's fault. It's because this hook is a little small for this yarn. I'm going to chain one and extend my loop a little bit. Bring my next bead up. Bring my hook in from the opposite side. Grab that working loop and pull it through. And again, if I have to tighten that loop up, this is where I'm going to do it. Now in this case, I'm going to skip the bead, put a half double crochet in the next half double crochet, and ignore that chain two. Chain two, turn. One, two. And we're going to just keep going. Half double crochet in the half double crochet. Chain one and extend the loop. Pull it through the bead. Half double crochet in the last half double crochet. So we're going to do that until all seven of the beads have been incorporated. And you can see this is a good time to check that they spin freely. There's nothing unfortunate going on here. They spin very easily. Okay, here we go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you can see I'm sort of checking as we go here to make sure they spin freely, which is what we want. And we're going to chain two and turn, one, two. And now I want to take it back to the same width as where I started. So I'm going to put two half double crochets in this half double crochet, and two half double crochets in that half double crochet. So there's one, Two. Oh, I got a little split here. Let's try that again. Here's my second one. I'm going to skip over the bead and find the other half double. Sometimes it's easier to look from the other side. There we go. One. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump right into the edging. So remember how earlier I said we were going to use those chain twos again? Here they are, and you'll notice there's one on this side, then the next one's over here, then the next one's over here, then the next one's over here, because they were turning chains. So now we're going to use them to stitch into as if they were chain spaces. So we're going to put five double crochets in the first, that little chain two space that was along the side, two, three, four, five, Now there's no chain two space over here, right? It's over here. So we're going to go to the next one and put a single crochet in there. So we're going to do that one more time. We're going to look for the next chain two space, put five double crochets in there, and then look for the next chain two space and put one single crochet in there. So this is what it looks like at this point. Now I'm going to go around the corner. I have two things going on. One is I'm going to work in the opposite side of my foundation chain. So there's my one, two, three half double crochets that I made and that original turning chain. So I'm going to work in each of those four areas. And I'm also going to take this opportunity to start crocheting over the tail. You don't have to, but it makes it so much easier to weave in later. So I'm going to put five double crochets in the opposite side of the foundation chain of that first stitch. So that was one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to put one double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So that's one, two, 
then two and then in the bottom of this turning chain I'm going to put five double crochets in there and get a good stick again there's nothing wrong with this yarn for this project it's just it's a little bit thick for this crochet hook but I also like the tight fabric that I'm getting because again if this is something that somebody's going to have in their pocket or on the side of their purse and play with you want a really firm stitch texture because you want it to be able to stand up to the wear and tear of fidgeting so one two three four five we did it one two three four five now I'm going to go way over here to the next chain two space put a single crochet in that next chain two space I'm going to put five double crochets in the next one I will put a single crochet and then I will meet you back here to finish it off now so there was my single my five doubles my single and then I want to get five more doubles on the side and I'm going to go along the side so right in here next to that first bead row and I'm going to try and find more than one strand to go under because again I want durability but that is more of an art than a science if you find someplace good to put it then that's where it belongs so one two three four five so now all we have to do is finish this off and add our key ring so I'm going to take my ring and I'm going to hold it behind my work and I'm going to uh, crochet through four stitches so I'm looking for one two three four and that is the row where we put two on one side of the bead and two on the other side of the bead those are the stitches I'm looking for so I'm going to insert my hook but I'm also going to put it through the ring of my my little key ring here and I'm going to make sure to keep the working yarn in the back and I'm going to finish my single crochet so that's one through the ring two three four single crochets are going to hold that ring in place and then I'm going to slip stitch in the next stitch cut my yarn and pull it through now all I have to look I'm all I'm all done this is all attached it's very sturdy I have my edging all the way around I have my seven little beads that I can play with so the only thing I have to do now is weave in this end and fasten off this end and I've got a pretty good start here because I crocheted over it so that's all there is to our beaded crocheted fidget keychain <laughs> that's a lot of words um, as always you can zip over to the blog to get the pattern all written out I thank you for your kind attention please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are so inclined and I look forward to seeing you again here real soon bye bye